Just flip to any classifieds and you can find countless ads looking to recruit telemarketers. It isn't the most glamorous of jobs, but someone's got to do it. In fact, there are many like Noshida who do enjoy the job. Noshida, could you tell me, like, why do you want to be a telemarketer? Um, basically because I love to talk to people, uh, not only over the phone and actually to meet them as well. So by talking to them, you can know what kind of people are out there. So you are not like being taken aback in when you face up, you know, these kind of instances. Uh. So who are your, tell me your favourite and your least favourite type of uh, people to talk to? I like speaking to uh, doctors. Uh, doctors, uh, they are very nice and it's easy to actually uh, get them to buy the product. Uh, of course, not all doctors, but most of them are. And another type of group that I like is uh, the Malay uncles. Uh, so I can talk to them and we will like build rapport over the phone and talk about some other interests that he's keen. When he talks about like uh, life nowadays is too expensive and he can his, his car is getting more and more expensive, his insurance and all that. So I always just zoom in and ask something related to that. So... Uh, he will like once you actually manage to get a report with the with the customer, uh, they are willing to talk to you and will willing to spend that bit of money to get the product that you are selling to them. So it's very easy. So sometimes I can, I will converse in a bit of Malay mix of English, yeah. So, and like we will laugh over the phone. Uh, least favorite will be of course those nasty ones, but uh, actually not really. Sometimes when they initially they will be very nasty to you, but when you it, it, I mean, as a telemarketer, it has to be the tone of your voice and the way you talk to the customer. So some t- I try to be nice over the phone and listen, let's say, when they, they got problem with claims or anything like that. And uh, those least, cus- least nasty customers or nasty customers can turn out to be my favourite customers sometimes. But don't you like have to deal with like nasty people, rude comments, almost on a daily basis? I mean, how do- doesn't it affect your life? Actually, no. Because, uh, I mean, life is very short. So, you, if you take all this uh, mean too deep into you, I mean, you, are, you won't turn out to be a happy person. So, just move on. And, of course, there are a lot of customers out there that you can call. And you can never know that they will be very happy with your service and the way you talk to them as well. Yeah, we just have to be nice to the customer and people around us and just look forward to the good things and forget about the bad things. Lah. Overseeing the team of telemarketers is project manager Zita. She not only organizes a team of eight, but also deals with complaints. So what kind of like uh, responses have you gotten from the from your customers or complaints from the customers? Okay, uh, one of the issues that we face in telemarketing is uh, we have a customers who have already agreed to enroll with us who later then calls up a few months later and says that uh, they did not enroll at all. Um, now, you see, the misconception that this the general public has sometimes is that when they actually agree over the phone, but because they don't have a physical material in front of them at the point of agreement, they think that it's not a sale. Okay. However, because of um, uh, everything is very scripted and we're going in accordance to law as well because we have our own compliance to adhere to. So what we ensure that we gain uh, agreement and an enrollment from a customer, a firm one, and without our customer's mode of payment and without his agreement, we would never have put through the sale. So sometimes we have this kind of issues that actually come up because they, they claim that they did not agree. I guess you're in a good position to address the public about how a lot of people feel telemarketing. marketing there's a certain bad stigma to it. There's a certain social stigma that telemarketers are a pest. So what do you have to say to this? Okay, um, to a certain extent, I do agree with this stigma that's going on. However, i just like to highlight that um, there really is a misconception about this group of people. And you know, we have nasty comments and, and people term us, they call us high-class beggars, which I don't think is a very nice thing. You see, there's a lot of industries, there's a lot of different kind of jobs, be it you're in a white collar, blue collar, and this is actually a skilled job. It takes a skilled professional to be able to do what he is doing over the phone. Because when, when a telemarketer is on the phone and there's a, a reason why he's calling you, either he wants to get a sale out of you or he wants to update you with something or he's doing some profiling. Had you not agreed, um, if you had agreed, it goes to show that my agent or this group of telemarketers are skillful enough to convince you without you having to look at them. Just like any other job, it seems most telemarketers do take pride in what they do. But what exactly do they do? And most importantly, how do they get hold of our contact numbers? We asked the client services manager of an award-winning outsourced telemarketing company, TeleDirect, to find out. 